Hey everybody, hope you guys are doing good today. And today's YouTube video is one I've been wanting to do a long time, uh, talking about old school versus sort of the new technology. Um, sort of been a topic that, you know, I've got a lot of interest in. And I think a lot of people that watch this channel do too, because uh, demographics on the channel for the most part, um, on mine anyway, are like 40 years and older. So I think a lot of people can probably relate to this. And if you don't, if you're younger, that's fine too, because you can still be young and be old school at the same time. But yeah, so I just wanted to have a, sort of have a discussion, just have a little talk about it. And hey, before we get into it, just wanted to remind everybody, um, you know, give, you get a chance to check out fishthemoment.com. We've got a bunch of really cool seminars coming up uh, this February on different types of seasonal movements of bass, pre-spawn patterns. I've um, got a couple different seminars, so you can check that out on fishthemoment.com and get signed up for that seminar. Um, they've been filling up, you know, pretty quick, you know, within like a week out or so. So check it out because I think there'll be some good info there for you. So anyway, let's talk a little bit about um, old school versus new school. Um, how competitive can you be if you're old school versus new school? And sort of what the definitions are a little bit. Um, I think that's one of the big misunderstandings is um, you hear those terms a lot. You hear like the you know, the new breed, you know, if you don't keep up with technology, you're going to get left behind. And, you know, you hear, you know, cliches about the old school dudes. But basically, in my opinion, this is sort of what old school is. Old school is, is sort of a philosophy in fishing that um, we want to keep things simple. We want to keep things down to earth. And the fact that technology may not be that good of a thing when it comes to the sport of fishing when it comes to the intrinsic, uh, the, the the primal, the pure elements that are attractive to fishing, um, old school approaches, old school techniques um, sort of go against this ex rapidly accelerating technology that we have. Um, and it's, it's not a deal that like leaves you behind, and we'll get into that a little bit later. But one of the things I wanted to talk about first as far as when you talk about um, old school guys being resistant to technology and change and that whole deal about, you know, if you don't keep up with the trends, you're going to get left behind. It's not the technology that is difficult to keep up with. That's not what we're talking about, but it's affording the technology, you know, and I'll use specifically like electronics here. It's like, you know, you buy one electronic unit and within a year or two, that unit's obsolete and they've got something else moving on that's supposed to be better. So it's this never ending perpetual rat race to keep up with the latest technology, sort of like an iPhone, you know, the iPhone 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, that's created on purpose. So you'll have to go out and spend more money, buy more things. So I think one of the big things that, uh, that a lot of the old school guys, you know, embrace is the fact they just don't want to get caught up in that rat, rat race. They don't want to have to get caught up in having to buy something new and spend thousands of dollars every 12 months once they get used to something they're comfortable with. And that's okay because here's the deal I want to tell you guys. When you talk about the topic of old school versus new ways of fishing in competition, you don't have to embrace the new technologies to can be, be competitive. I want to clarify that right now. There's going to be a lot of situations that, yeah, if you don't have live scope, if you don't have, you know, you know, certain lures, certain you know, specific, you know, high tech techniques, you may get left out from tournament, you know, some tournaments here and there, but you simply can, you don't have to have that to compete on a high level. Um, look at John Cox. John Cox is the most simplest dude in the world. You know, he basically, the only reason he has electronics on his boat is to put a waypoint on. If he, if he got a bite flipping a lay down, he puts a waypoint on it. And he's arguably been one of the most dominant forces in fishing that there is. He's as old school as they get when it comes to that. And I'll use my own example, my own tournament example last year. You know, last year I fished the Bassmaster Open Circuit, all of them. I finished 13th place <clears throat> in Angler of the Year out of, you know, 200 plus guys in it. And all I used all year was my 2D sonar. I never caught a single bass all year long with side imaging, with down imaging. I didn't have live scope. All I had was 2D sonar. And I had the fish hooked and, you know, actually had the fish bite me and had them hooked and come into the boat to easily have qualified for the Elite Series, even though I finished 13th in the points. So that's as old school as it gets using nothing but 2D sonar. So the point is, 
you can be competitive in professional fishing and stay old school. So, you know, the thing that I sort of want to reiterate here, and I want to sort of maybe, uh, you know, give some of the guys peace out there that are torn between this as far as, you know, that they're resistant to change. Guys, you don't have to change if you don't want to. You can still go out there and you can be competitive on any level of fishing, fishing old school techniques. When I'm talking about old school, I'm talking about power bait fishing stuff, staying with the jig, staying with the spinner bait, staying with the crank bait, you know, just using your GPS and your 2D sonar. You can be competitive at a super high level in the sport just doing that. So don't think that you have to go out and spend all this money um, to keep up with the rat race. The thing which you have to do in order to be competitive fishing old school style, you have to be tremendously efficient. You have to maximize every bite that you get because when you're fishing old school techniques, most of the time you're fishing for individual isolated fish. You're not fishing for school fish like a lot of those guys that are life scoping they're doing. You know, they're they're fishing for, you know, schools of bass. Old school, old school techniques center around, uh, you know, target fishing, shallow fishing, isolated objects. So you have to make sure that when you're fishing old school like that, number one, you make the commitment. You go to a lake that you're fishing and you eliminate everything off the bank. You, when you go there, you know that you're gonna fish the back of the creeks, the back of the coves, boat docks, whatever the shallow cover is, and you're not gonna waste your time messing with any offshore stuff. That's the commitment you make. That's the number one thing. The number two thing is you have to become efficient and you have to be become a master at boat positioning and casting angles. In order to maximize your efficiency in old school um, and compete with the, with the new tech stuff, you have to be able to have your boat control in such where you, where you come into the cover at the perfect speed. You don't come in too hot, you don't come in too slow. You analyze the wind conditions, the sun conditions, you maximize your casting angle and boat position and to give you the best chance to catch that fish. And once that fish bites, you have to get that fish in the boat. You can't lose them. You have to maximize everything. That's how you compete uh, fishing old school techniques versus the new school. So, and I'm not out here, to, I'm not talking, I'm not out here saying that all the new technology, you know, all anyone that does this, I'm not saying that you're a bad person or you're a bad angler for doing that. If that's the way you like to fish, great. I mean, if that's if you if you like to get out there and idle offshore, you know, for uh, you know half the day and fish for half the day, you know that that's fine. You know, go ahead and pursue that way of fishing. But um, the point is, is that both techniques can work, and both techniques can work highly efficiently. You know, if you basically make that commitment to do that. So, and that's the same with all the guys that are really good offshore. Um, you know, take Johnny Schultz, for example, you know, who I work with at Fish the Moment. Johnny, that's basically all he does. He spends more time idling and graphing offshore structures, deep water, than he does actually fishing. And so he's made that commitment to that way of fishing, and that's why he's so effective at it, and that's why he's so successful at it, is he's become, it's become his art form. Offshore fishing has become his art form. And you have to do the same thing, you know, if you're an old school angler. So I consider myself, you know, I, I consider myself old school. I like old school fishing. I'm not a fan of technology and fishing for a lot of reasons we've talked about on this, on this channel, if you've watched me. Um, but at the same time, knowing that, even though I consider myself old school, I know that if I'm going to go out and compete in these tournaments, that I have got to adapt some of the new technologies into my old school approach. So... I think you can do both. That's another thing about that. You can implement certain technologies that you like into your approach of old school fishing. And sometimes that's going to be the most, you know, highly effective, most competitive way to fish. But, you know, bass fishing, it's, bass fishermen are just like everybody else. They're individualistic. Everybody has, you know, strengths. Everybody has weaknesses. Everybody has abilities uniquely their own in the sport. And that's the great thing about this sport. And that's what makes this sport be able to have one angler that you've never heard of go out and compete against a superstar angler and beat those superstars simply because creativity, ingenuity, uh, imagination is more important than intellectual knowledge in the sport a lot of times. So um, that's, that should be a comforting thought, you know, for everybody out there. 
But anyway, my point of this video out there, um, you know, you know, this topic about old school versus new technology, it's, it's coming up more and more and more. And the point I want to make here is don't be ashamed. Don't be embarrassed. Don't feel like you have to apologize for being old school because in my opinion, it's admirable because old school anglers out there are traditionalists. You know, they tend to, you know, have, I think they have a little bit greater appreciation for the history of the sport and where we come from in a lot of terms and a little bit more nature awareness than that. So, uh, you know, there's room for everybody out there. There's room for the high tech guys. There's room for the old school guys and everything's cyclical. You know, if you've watched my channel before, you know that I've made the prediction that I think that the old school techniques are going to start making more of a comeback the more that offshore dominates and the more that technology dominates because the last month, you know, I've been doing a lot of, in, the, of our on the water instructional lessons for fish the moment where I take guys out and we teach them specific techniques. And I've been fishing table rock and Stockton Lake a lot here in Missouri. Nobody is fishing the bank. Nobody is going down the bank, just fishing. Literally. I have seen nobody the last month, every single person I've seen fishing table rock Lake is out in a hundred foot of water, trolling around in the middle of the creek, in the middle of the lake, looking down at their live scope. Nobody's on the bank. What's going to happen is that is not something that's going to like work forever. You know, eventually those fish, fish are smart. They evolve to change. They evolve to pressure. Eventually those same untapped groups of fish that are getting caught now with live scope and forward facing sonar, it's going to be a cycle again. Those fish are going to start moving back into the mid-depth, shallower ranges. That's my opinion and my prediction on that. So we'll see how it goes. It's an entering topic of conversation. But hey, anyway, guys, let me know. Are you old school? Are you new school? Throw out some comments here in the comment section. Let's get a conversation started. Um, I'm a I'm a proud old school dude. You know, I came from the old school. You know, I still flipping a big big black jig on 30 pound line is still my favorite way to catch them. And, uh, you know, I'll probably always be like that, even though I'll, I'm going to implement, or I do implement, you know, technologies into my fishing. But anyway, just wanted to cover that a little bit, a little bit of conversation about that. Hey guys, appreciate you turn, tune into the channel. Please subscribe to this channel. If you haven't, you know, if you're watching the videos, if you like them, hit that like button. Um, and even if you don't like this channel, even if you watch it and some of the things I irritate you, you know, makes you irritated and question, go ahead and subscribe to the channel because at least I can provide some, you know, some, uh, something to gripe about <laughs> once in a while if you don't like what I'm saying, if you get the notifications. Anyway, that's today's tip. Hope you guys are doing good. We'll check in later. See you.